I didn't even know I needed one of these, but after a few weeks of testing it, I'm convinced this little box belongs in every home lab and every server room. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's garage, I'm going to show you a device that gives you full control of any computer from anywhere in the world, even before it finishes booting, or starts for that matter. It's called the Jet KVM, and I think it might just be the must-have remote management tool for anybody who takes their system seriously. The Jet KVM is an IP KVM, a network-enabled keyboard, video, and mouse controller that you attach to a PC or to a server or to anything with a video output and a keyboard hookup to take complete remote control, even at the BIOS level. Unlike typical remote control desktop software that only works once the operating system is running, Jet KVM operates independently of the host using just the video for output. For home lab enthusiasts and IT professionals, Jet KVM represents a leap forward in accessibility. It brings enterprise grade remote management into the hands of anybody, and at a price and a form factor suitable for home offices and small server closets. Just to be clear, this is not a sponsored episode. I just bought my own one with my own money on a Kickstarter like anybody else. Now, sometimes I take heat for being too enthusiastic in certain reviews, but it's because I don't review the stuff that's boring or sucks, so you get what you get. Like, consider the case of being able to fix a misconfigured BIOS setting or install a fresh OS on a machine that's thousands of miles away, or at the end of your workbench, perhaps. All without even touching it in person. Jet KVM makes that possible. It doesn't require anything on the target PC. Not an agent, not an OS, not a piece of software, not even a functioning hard drive. So the moment it's connected to HDMI and USB, Jet KVM becomes a window into the machine, from power on to OS to desktop. Now, to appreciate the Jet KVM significance, it's important to understand the traditional ways of managing computers remotely and their various shortcomings. In enterprise environments, dedicated hardware management interfaces like IPMI or vendor specific solutions such as Dell's iDRAC and HP's iLO have long provided out of the band remote control. However, such interfaces are typically found only on expensive server grade hardware and often come with licensing costs or really brutal old clunky interfaces. For those running a home lab with consumer motherboards or maintaining PCs and remote offices, IPMI is simply not an option. The common fallback for remote access has thus been software-based tools, think RDP, VNC, or TeamViewer. These require running operating system on the machine though, and if the computer is stuck in the BIOS or is a failed operating system or is completely powered off, they can't help. And this is where an external KVM over IP device becomes invaluable. It brings the capabilities of a data center KVM switch or server management module to any standard computer, even to a Raspberry Pi. Unlike remote control desktop software, Jet KVM doesn't depend on the target PC state. It works even if the machine is frozen, unresponsive, hung, or even has no software installed whatsoever. And unlike built-in motherboard solutions, it's vendor neutral and can be added to any device with video and or USB port. Remember that you can plug it into anything with an HDMI video output and a USB keyboard and probably a mouse input, so you can plug it into something as simple as a Raspberry Pi and you get a desktop. For home labbers who might be running a mix of custom-built PCs, Raspberry Pi servers, or second-hand mini PCs, the Jet KVM offers a universal tool to manage them all remotely. Jet KVM provides the same level of control and flexibility that complex enterprise systems offer, but in a form you can use in your own home office. This democratization of remote access is why the Jet KVM matters. It really fills a void between the simplistic remote controlled desktop software and costly server room hardware, empowering individuals and home labbers to handle far flung computers as if they were sitting right in front of them. Imagine being able to fix a misconfigured BIOS setting or install a fresh OS on a machine that's a thousand miles away, all without ever touching it in person. Well, the Jet KVM makes that possible. The moment that the Jet KVM is connected to HDMI and USB, it becomes a window into the machine state. One look at the Jet KVM and you know that it's something different. Now, despite its small size, the device exudes a robust, almost industrial quality. Encased in a solid die-cast zinc alloy body, it has heft and durability that sets it apart from the DIY solutions built on little SBCs. The metal housing provides excellent protection and helps dissipate heat from the electronics inside, which can be crucial for a device doing constant video encoding. Jet KVM looks to be designed to survive for the long haul, whether it's sitting on a desk or mounted in a closet with other gear. Another nice feature of the design is the built-in display on the front. The Jet KVM includes a 1.69 inch IPS color touchscreen. This small screen, which is reminiscent of a smartwatch face, shows key information and other local feedback. At a glance, you can see the unit's IP address, the number of active remote sessions, and whether the USB and HDMI connections to the computer are actually active. 
Screen is really clear and sharp and provides exactly the information that an admin needs up front. It's touch capable, suggesting potential for future on-device controls, though most interactions are really through the web interface. The reality is that once you've discovered the IP, you don't really need the display any further, and I've never once made productive use of the touch interface. But in those initial moments of setup, that display is nearly priceless. Despite packing that screen in the high-quality metal shell, Jet KVM remains remarkably compact. On the back side, it features a mini HDMI input, a USB-C port, an Ethernet jack, and a small RJ11 port for expansions like a power switch control that is reported to be forthcoming. Until then, though, you cannot power cycle a system with a Jet KVM. Doesn't matter in my cases where the machine is actually local, but it might matter to you in remote cases, so it's something to think about. Inside Jet KVM's solid shell lies a clever assembly of electronics tailored for the job of a remote KVM. At its heart is a rock chip processor, a system on a chip chosen for its video handling capabilities. Specifically, Jet KVM is powered by a rock chip RV1106 G3, which is an ARM Cortex A7 processor running at 1 GHz. This chip might not sound that impressive in raw computing terms, but it has an integrated H.264, H.265 video encoder. The RV1106 was likely originally meant for cameras and streaming devices, which makes it ideal for an IP KVM. It can take incoming video frames and encode them in real time without bogging down the CPU. Supporting the processor, Jet KVM includes 256 megabytes of DDR3L RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage. The 16 gigabytes of storage is used for the operating system and for user content like virtual disk images. On the video side, Jet KVM effectively functions like a tiny external capture card. The HDMI port on Jet KVM is an input that takes the video signal from the target PC's output. Internally, this HDMI signal is fed into an HDMI to CSI bridge, converting the HDMI video feed into a camera feed so that the rock chip SOC can ingest it. Jet KVM's USB-C port acts as a USB gadget interface. When you plug it into the target computer, the computer believes that it's a keyboard and a mouse and that they've been connected. On the networking side, Jet KVM includes a 100 megabit per second Ethernet controller for LAN connectivity. There's no Wi-Fi module on board whatsoever, which is either a conscious choice to focus on robust performance or a cop-out, depending on whether you want Wi-Fi or not. All these components are integrated on a custom PCB. The engineering focus seems to be on minimizing latency and ensuring stable performance. The device runs an efficient embedded Linux with the Jet KVM software stack built in Go. Getting it up and running is straightforward. Attach the Jet KVM to the target computer using an HDMI cable and a USB cable. Connect the Jet KVM to your network via the Ethernet cable. After a moment, the Jet KVM powers on and displays its network details. And within seconds, the device is then ready to use. Using Jet KVM is entirely done through its web based interface. You simply go to a web browser and enter the Jet KVM's IP address from the front screen. Your first choice is whether to add a password or not. I recommend that you should, but confess that I don't, at least not on the local stuff. Once authenticated, you'll see the live video feed of the remote computer's display. This is a streaming view of whatever it is that's coming through the HDMI cable. Alongside the video, the web UI presents controls. You can capture keyboard input and mouse movements which Jet KVM sends to the target PC over the USB link. The experience is that of a remote desktop, but implemented at the hardware level. The Jet KVM web interface provides performance metrics and management tools, so it can display the current video resolution, the frame rate, and it has a latency monitor as well. Jet KVM supports over-the-air firmware updates, and the web interface will notify you if an update is available, and you can trigger it with just a click. In everyday use, the usability of the Jet KVM is akin to using a cloud remote desktop service, except everything is local and you're in full control. It's essentially as if a phantom keyboard, mouse, and monitor were physically attached to that remote PC. Imagine you needed to enable virtualization support in the BIOS or change the boot order on the server in a remote location. Well, with Jet KVM, you can watch the boot sequence live in your browser and hit that magic key at the right moment to enter the BIOS. Once inside, you can use your keyboard through the Jet KVM to change the settings as needed. You can perform remote OS installations and so on. Suppose you want to install Linux or Windows on a new machine that has no OS. Jet KVM allows you to do this by mounting the virtual media. Through the web UI, you can upload an ISO file to the Jet KVM device. Jet KVM will then store that on the eMMC, as we said, and then present that ISO to the target computer as if it were a USB drive. You'll find yourself looking at the installer menu on the remote screen, able to proceed with a full OS installation completely over the network. Enthusiasts have also used network boot utilities like netboot.xyz in conjunction with Jet KVM. You could boot the target into netboot.xyz and then steer that process via Jet KVM.
I'm sure you know this scenario. A system is locked up or is stuck on some air screen. Well, the Jet KVM can provide a window into exactly what's happening. You might discover the system is blue screened or sitting at a grub air. If the system needs a hard reset, Jet KVM alone might not cut power, but knowing the state means you can instruct somebody on site to intervene. Jet KVM's planned ATX power control module will eventually allow even this power cycling to be done remotely. Whether it's recovering from a crash or dealing with a hung update, Jet KVM ensures that you're not flying blind. And these use cases underscore why the Jet KVM is more than just a novelty. It's a genuinely powerful tool for remote management scenarios that used to be incredibly frustrating. A remote control device lives or dies by its performance. If typing on it feels laggy or the video is choppy, it becomes painful to use. Jet KVM delivers pretty impressively on the promise of real-time responsiveness. The device captures it up to 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second. The end-to-end -end latency, which is the delay between an action and seeing its result, is extremely low. Jet KVM's latency is around 30 to 60 milliseconds under ideal conditions. In real-world use on a typical local network, reviewers have measured around 80 to 100 milliseconds of lag. To put that in perspective, a human blinking takes about 100 to 150 milliseconds. This all means that the Jet KVM is pretty fantastic for remote administrative tasks, and it's great for doing a full OS install and going through the GUI and setting up the server's desktop environment and all of that. However, it's not intended for high motion video or low latency gaming. Jet KVM also does not transmit audio. While 80 milliseconds latency is great for interaction, for activities like competitive gaming it would still be noticeable. But Jet KVM is very clear about its purpose. It's a tool for remote system management. Here's a tidbit that you might not have considered about the audio. Because the Jet KVM lacks any audio support, it's going to compromise your ability to game and it pretty much rules out using it for media streaming. It's also important to consider the performance over the internet. On a remote connection, you might have another 50 milliseconds of network latency resulting in 150 milliseconds total. That's still pretty good for a remote control. The Jet KVM Cloud, which uses WebRTC, minimizes that by using geographically optimal relay servers. Because Jet KVM is using hardware encoding, it generally does not get bogged down, even if the screen is full of moving content. That means when you click or type, the remote system reacts promptly as expected, almost as if your hands were right there on a remote keyboard. All in all, it's an excellent little box, and it's incredibly cheap for what you get. And if you've ever had to reset your remote desktop password, and you find out that you can't do it over remote desktop, and you have to go to the actual server, but your server doesn't have a monitor and a mouse and a keyboard and all those kinds of things, just use it once. It's all you need. So if you enjoyed today's look at the Jet KVM, keep in mind that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like on the video before you go today. I'm getting dangerously close to a million subscribers, so feel free to push me over that edge. If you have any interest in matters related to the autism spectrum, please check out the free sample of my book on Amazon, link in the video description. It's everything I know now about living your best life on the spectrum that I wish I'd known long ago. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time right here in Dave's Garage.